Here is a 2023 Kia Stinger GT line all wheel drive in snow white pearl over black interior. What is the Kia Stinger? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over the exterior, interior, take it for a drive with some pros and cons and comparison between comparable vehicles before this vehicle becomes discontinued. One of the big comparisons that I like to do because this is really derived against the Germans. So BMW and Mercedes Benz. Because it's the GT line, it's not going to have the most powerful engine underneath the hood. But you will think that because of the appearance, especially with the hood vents, the tiger nose grille with the glossy gray exterior and interior LED projected headlamps and daytime runnings. Because of the gloss black on the side air curtains, it gives kind of a two-tone look to the vehicle and it really illustrates three tones because the center for the tiger nose grille and the lower part are a different color. So the combination with clearance at 5.1 inches, I think they did a great job in the sense of not making it look too athletic, but just enough. The A pillars are pushed back more, giving more of a drag reduction for aerodynamics and giving us that sport back design similar to Audi. 18 inch with the K design alloy wheels. You can option up to a 19 inch and if you go into the GT2, you're going to get Brembo front brakes, which is a four piston setup. And the rear will receive a two piston limited slip differential. McPherson strut front suspension is what we have with a five link rear suspension. You'll also get sticky tires. they will be the Michelin Cup Sport 4s. It's not 100% derived for the track, but when you're thinking of Kia, you don't always think performance, and they brought that to the table, illustrating what they can do. 68 horsepower, you will receive more with the GT, with the 3.3 twin turbo V6. This is a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder turbo charge, but you're still getting 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. Both will be paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. This is gonna achieve 21 MPGs for the city, 29 MPGs for the highway, but the more astonishing thing is when you think of the Germans, whether it's a BMW, an Audi, a Mercedes, you're not gonna receive 300 horsepower in a base engine option for a turbo four, nor will you get a twin turbo V6 that's gonna hover into a 50 to $52,000 price point. So. Sadly, they are discontinuing such a gym in the sense of what you're getting for performance. This is about a second-ish slower than the GT, but you get the styling elements. So the side curtain, it'll still flare out. You'll have that slope roof design. And what I like about the Stinger opposed to the K5 is because it's a hatch. You expect that window to be that way. When you go into the K5, you expect it to be different because it's a sedan, but they don't do that. They just put a piece of gloss black right before the trunk on the GT line and give you that spoiler but this is going to be more athletic and dynamic because of the whole structure of the vehicle this in the Kia Telluride I feel has changed the whole branding starting on the lower you get the gloss black with the quad exhaust tips this is a four inch exit, which makes it even bigger than any of the rivals in its price point. Reverse camera and reverse parking sensors, LED tail lamps will wrap around above the Stinger badging and the GT line badging to finish it off. Quick release, 23 cubic feet of cargo. And because it's a hatch, you have a wide and long opening LED interior lighting. Underneath, you're going to receive a spare tire. Split fold the rear bench at a 40-60 split and that will increase cargo to 53 cubic feet. And that's almost the size of a mid-size SUV. We need to go inside, start up so you can hear that exhaust note. way power seat adjustments, heated seats for the front, GT line badging in the headrest, six-way manual adjustment for the passenger.
the dashboard layout is going to look more European, kind of similar to the older Mercedes with the circular air vents in the center, more of a box structure on the side with the gloss black. And you'll get the satin aluminum that's gonna run throughout the dashboard and a two-tier setup with the gloss black and a touchscreen with navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Kia connection, put it into reverse and we have a reverse camera with trajectory and they expand out when you turn the wheel. Change the camera positions by just simply clicking onto them. Going into some buttons or the infotainment screen in your stereo system, climate control settings, open this up and you get a wireless charging pad, a USB, a 12 volt, a little bit of storage for some pocket change and the key fob for the Kia Stinger leather around the shifter with the driver mode select that you can toggle through smart, eco, comfort, sport, and custom. Switches for the heated seats and heated steering wheel to click the reverse camera on the fly. More sport derived open up inside. It's not deep but it is wide with a storage tier that's always fun putting back but once you finally figure it out you can put your wallet. Three spoke leather wrap steering wheel Heated with the GT line badging. Adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, the paddle shifters, and the stocks. The gauge cluster has a 4.2 TFT display that can go through an array of information for the driver, including your turn-by-turn -turn navigation and any settings for the vehicle. The dashboard and the door panels integrate into each other with the gloss black and the tweeter to start off with. Everyday materials are pretty much found everywhere. It's gonna be more sporty because this is a sports car. One touch up and down for the front windows in a medium sized storage pocket with a beverage holder in the front. Headroom for the front is at 38.3 inches. The foot well area or your leg space goes to 42.6 inches for the front occupants. The back seat, 37 inches of headroom because it's a slope roof design. And what I mean by that is exactly what you're seeing in the camera. Leg space at 36.3 inches. So you do have enough room if you're six foot three in the front and the back, the rails are pushed up quite a bit. In the center, you'll have a 12 volt and a USB air vents that you could toggle to cold or hot in storage behind both of the front seats. The door panel receives the same materials as the front every day, and then it gets soft to touch, more sport to ride, a smaller storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out in the front. Folding this up so we can sit into the center. And you can see because of this hump, it's going to be a little bit tight, but leg space is still doable. Feet space will be shared and the same thing with butt and shoulder space. And headroom for the center occupants will be a little bit worse because of the design of this sport back. 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder with 300 horsepower, which is insane when you consider how small the engine is. 311 pound-feet of torque, yes. We're losing 68 horsepower when we're compared to the 3.3 V6 twin turbo, but we got a savings because this is just over $40,000. So when you're considering a vehicle in this price point, you have to think what you're getting. And the GT line does boast a lot. You get the navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that's gonna be standard features, 12-way power seat adjustment for the driver. I wish it did have ventilated seats because we are in the $40,000 price point. But comparable vehicles to this, you're still gonna have the same thing. There will be some differences when you go into the Germans because most of them will have power seat adjustment for the passenger. And unlike the Germans, when you're in sport mode, So taking me to some pros and cons about this vehicle. One of the big pros about it is the performance that comes from this engine. You're getting under six seconds, zero to 60. Yes, you'll get 4.7 when you go into the full GT, but the price is gonna escalate into the $50,000 price point in which there's a lot of vehicles in that price category. Will it be the fastest and the most horsepower? It just depends on the tier that you go into. If you go against the BMW M340i, it's one of those sweet spot vehicles, you get it around 60 grand. It's kind of like, which way do you go? This is discontinued, that one is going to be 
a BMW, so you're gonna have more of a near 50-50 weight distribution. It's gonna have more performance underneath the hood. When you go to the new C43 AMG, that thing is insane what they're pumping out of that baby engine. But if you go into the C300, which would be more comparable to this, it's going to outperform it with horsepower and torque. Interior specs, you will have a little bit more leg room in the Mercedes. You'll have more leg room here than the BMW. So again, a give and take between those. Going back to some more pros about the vehicle, the styling on the exterior, it looks very athletic. You have better clearance in this. You have a pretty nice exhaust note to this. It's pretty quiet in the interior. If you add some features, you can get where the signals will show you the camera on your gauge cluster, which none of the rivals do that. So for safety, this one will be a little bit more advanced, but going into some things I dislike about it, no power seat adjustment for the passenger at a $40,000 price point. Some other things I dislike go into the rear lights. They got that little strip, which it would be nice if it was cleaned up and a little bit more seamless. You don't really have to add that little piece there on the side panel. Turn radius at a stop point. Going to receive two lanes. Let's rock and roll. It has the performance that you want to put a smile on your face in which it gives that competition to all of the rivals. It's sad that they're discontinuing this, but they're keeping the G70 because that's going to be a little bit more luxury, whereas this has more of a youthful, sporty attribute to it. Some other cons to the vehicle, the interior could be ref refreshed, but Obviously, they're discontinuing it, so there's no point to even really go there. Just where they had this structure here in the center with the circular air vents, they really went Mercedes and then tried to do a little bit of BMW twist on the edges in which it fits and works, but I could see this vehicle starting to have some age because of the design that they put for the interior, especially because the infotainment screen is a little bit smaller than some of the rivals also. If they would have put the infotainment where the air vents are, I think it would have pretty much nailed it right on the spot, put the air vents on top and done their own thing. Because the Kia Stinger really is one of those cars that piloted the Kia line, just like the Telluride. These two vehicles change the whole dynamic for this brand, making people understand that, look, you got maneuverability, you got it. You got dynamics underneath it in which most people when they first were talking about Kias was ah, it's an everyday vehicle, it's nothing crazy, nothing like wow. That's not gonna happen when you get into the Kia line. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, the merchandise website and Instagram, leave a comment and a like and I'd like to thank Regal Kia for giving us this 2023 Kia Stinger GT line.